All right, we're back and continuing our presentations. Go ahead. Hello, everybody. Uh, we're, we're Jack, and we did bridges. Uh, <laughs> Jack Krabinski. And I'm Jack Lipman. Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the abyss, and we'll, we'll get right into this. OK, so why did we do bridges? Well, everyone uses bridges, literally everyone. It, uh, it maybe went over the overpass on Highway 10, depending on if you live there. Maybe you went over the bridge on the Mississippi River if you live in St. Cloud. Uh, they're, uh, they've always been a fundamental part of human transportation, so we thought it'd be a little interesting to know some of the math that goes into construction. History of bridges are bridges. Bridges date way back, really far back. The oldest bridge still in use today, according to Guinness Book of World Records, is a slab stone single arch bridge over the River Meles in Izmir, Turkey, which dates back to circa 850 BC. Remnants of bridges built by Mycenaeans have been found in Greece that date back to 1600 BC. The first suspension bridge, bridges were constructed by Thankton Gyalpo in the 15th century. All right, so modern bridges is more where we kind of get into where we need calculus. Obviously, they didn't have calculus with the Mycenaeans or the, in Turkey back then. But now when we get into more, more modern bridges where there's heavier loads, the, the automobiles were just, they were just too big for their bridges that they had constructed at the time. So now they need much more robust architecture and materials to carry these larger loads over a larger span, over maybe a very big river or bay or something. So the first bridge that's built with iron was the very creatively named Iron Bridge in England. Circa 1781. Gotta love the English. The oldest modern suspension bridge that is built in uh, the U.S. that's still in use is Roebling's Delaware Aqueduct, which was only constructed in 1847, and it's still holding on. <laughs> <laughs> suspension bridge. The modern suspension bridge is a relatively new type of bridge, and has many advantages over other bridges. Um, it has cables between two main towers with vertical cables coming down from the main one. The Golden Gate Bridge and the Brooklyn Bridge are great examples of suspension bridges. And they're very advantageous because they can um, be much longer and other types than other types and require much less materials to build. All right, so on a bridge and mainly a suspension bridge, which we're going to be focusing on, there's only really two main forces we have to worry about. Uh, there's compression, which is like a pushing force, which is usually going to be created by gravity. The bridges want to go down to the earth, and we don't want that, so we need to repel compression. Uh, and then there's tension, which is created by the materials that can't go down, so now they're pulling on each other. And if the materials can pull apart, then everything falls down. So we need to repel both compression and tension, to make everything sure that all the forces add up to zero. Forces on suspension bridges. What makes a suspension bridge so nice is that the two main forces are split up between the two main parts. The towers undergo compression and the cables undergo tension. This means that you can use materials that have excellent tensile strength for the cables and different materials that have excellent compressive strength for the towers. All right, so one way that calculus can be connected to suspension bridge is helping find the arc length of the cable so you can approximate the cost in constructing, say, a Golden Gate Bridge. Because you can't just start building a bridge without consulting your local officials on how much is it cost. Because maybe you can't afford it, and it's not feasible, or maybe people don't want to pay that money for your bridge, so it never gets built. So engineers need to have an approximation of the cost that's going to go into this. So they need to find the cost of all the materials. So we're going to find the shape of the cable uh, and prove that it's a parabola. And next, we must find the equation of the arc, uh, either a parabola or a catenary. And the arc length will be used to calculate and find out the cost of the two tables. Cables. Tables. Tables, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what kind of graphs do the cables take? You might look at it and just say, oh, that's a parabola. It's curvy. Well, you're wrong, because it could also be a catenary. You might not know what that is, but We'll get, we'll get into that in the next slide. 
So we need to make sure that we have a parabola so we don't start making the equation for a parabola. It's not a parabola and now our costs are off and we don't have much money to make our bridge. All right, so to find the main arc of the cable, uh, we'll, we'll just get right into that. So what's the difference between a parabola and a catenary? Well, they all know a parabola, that's just x squared, or your simplest is ax squared plus bx plus c, all right? And in nature, parabola forms under its own weight, but it's supporting. As compared to a catenary, where gravity is just the sole force, like say on an electrical pole, the two things are just hanging, are just held to chains. And the equation for that is much less nice. It's e to the ax plus e to the negative ax divided by two times b plus c. So we're hoping for a parabola, basically. So which is it? Clearly you can see that in this picture our our arc is supported, so it has to be a parabola, as we did in our definition here. But since we want to be extra certain, we want to do a proof with math to make sure that it's a, that it's a parabola, because I know how much you love proofs. All right, so just remember this. The shape of the cable is, is our graph that we're trying to find. And the shape of the cable is formed by the forces acting upon. All right, we have some tense differentiation going on here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna start and try and find the derivative of this graph, because once we have the derivative, we can integrate, and then we'll have the form and know if it's a parabola or a catenary. So we're gonna start at the lowest point here, and we'll define that as our origin point. And then we're gonna pick any point along this cable here, it's an arbitrary point, it can be anywhere. We're gonna analyze its slope. Okay. So right here is our point O, and from here to here will be the distance from your origin to the point A that we're gonna define here. It can be anywhere. And there's gonna be three forces going on uh, in between this region. There's gonna be gravity, obviously, uh, a horizontal tension force right here, and then another tension force oops, uh, right here that's tangent to the slope at wherever your point is. And when you analyze it in this way, wherever you put your A, you have a tension force that's tangent to the slope. So that's basically our derivative. So if we find the equation for this tension force, we'll have our derivative. So that's all we want to do. So what do we know about, all right, what do we know about slope, okay? We know slope is rise over run, and we'll get into this. The bridge is motionless, so we know it's not accelerating. So we can assume the net forces, our horizontal tension force and our uh, tension force at point A, and its weight, the gravity, they, when they sum them up, they have to equal zero. Otherwise, the bridge wouldn't be standing. All right. So, since weight is a vertical force, that can be thought of as your rise. And since the horizontal force at your origin point, the lowest point on the cables, that can be thought of as your run. So, the slope or your derivative here is just simply the weight over your horizontal tension force. And I'll explain right here how that works. Because all the forces add up to zero. If we made a little diagram out of a triangle, they'd have to touch and connect point to point. So back in like whatever grade, like seventh grade, when we were first doing like a linear graph, and you were like rise over run, it, it's backwards. But if we did it like this, it would work. They're both negative, so they work out. Um, you have your, you just connect and make the legs of your right triangle, and you'd have your slope. And that's what we're doing right there. So. Now we have our derivative. Y, you know, the y is the height of the cable, and x is going to be a horizontal distance from the point O to wherever point A is. So y prime is going to be the change in the height of the cable. So y prime is equal to the weight over the horizontal tension force, which we can 
elaborate on, and we know weight is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity or the horizontal tension force, all right? And mass is equal to density times volume. So y prime equals density times volume times acceleration due to gravity over the horizontal tension force. But the volume of the bridge, you look at it, the width is constant. No matter where you go, your bridge width is going to be the same. All right? uh, and the height's going to be constant because when we're looking at the mass of the bridge here, the cables here, its mass and its volume is so ins ins insignificant, we can ignore its mass and it won't skew our equation hardly at all. So now all we have is the length of the deck. So we have x is our only variable, and that's like if this is your x-axis, it's just a simple distance. So we have a normal independent variable that we're working with, and we can integrate this equation here. And keep in mind that everything is a constant here that's already existing for the Golden Gate Bridge. So when we integrate, we basically just get x squared, which is quadratic. It's a parabola. So now we get into arc length. Before we could find the arc length of the cable, we had to find a quadratic equation to fit it. I decided to find a quadratic equation to fit the cable on my own, since the one Jack made is a little difficult to work with. And we know it's a par parabola. So, um, and the length between the two towers is 1,280 meters and the height of the tower from the road is 152 meters. And I, uh, yeah. I used a vertex form to find uh, an equation to fit the parabola. And two points I chose, well, I chose the vertex at 0, 0, which is where the cable meets the bridge. And the other point I chose at the very right tower at 640, 152 meters. And so, yeah, I used the vertex form of a quadratic equation to solve for the function. So I, the vertex form is this, and the vertex is at hk, so if I plug in 0 and 0, um, I get, yeah, the function, which is ax squared. And um, the point it shows with being 640, if I input it for into the function at x and, well, f of x and y, x and y, I can find the value a that is a constant in front of the x squared. So I did all the work there, and the function I came up with for the um, cable was 0 0.00037x squared. <coughs> now, arc you ready? The arc length of the cable can be calculated now with the equation. So the derivative of f of x is 0.00074x, and now I can use the arc length formula to find the arc length, which ended up being 1,326.36 meters. Now, how much did it cost? Now that we have the arc length, we can calculate the cost of the cable. And we know that it's made of steel, and we know the arc length, and we also know the radius of the cable is to be yeah. 0.46 meters. Mm -hmm. So. If we find the volume of the cables, we can multiply it by the cost per cubic meter. Kind yeah, of. per cubic meter. It's going to be a little conversion in that. Yeah, a lot of converting to find the cost. So we have the volume equation. We figured out the volume of the cables together to be 1,763.425 meters cubed. And the cost of steel per pound is 80 cents. And we know that steel weighs. 7,850 kilograms per cubic meter, and if we convert this, we get um, um, 1,706.29 pounds per cubic meter. And for the whole cable, that's like 30 million pounds of steel in the two cables combined. And when multiplied by um, 80 cents, the cost of the two cables of the bridge comes out to be. Twenty-four million dollars, four hundred twenty-four million four hundred fourteen thousand six hundred seventy-five point five five dollars, which is a lot. <laughs> Comparison: The Golden Gate Bridge cost twenty-seven thousand million dollars to construct back in the nineteen thirties, 
we adjusted for inflation, that's around $1.5 billion today. That means that the from tower to tower, the cost of the two main cables was 1.63% of total construction costs. End of the road. We can see through this project that calculus is everywhere. Even a boring suspension bridge is full of it. And calculus was used to prove the shape that the cable took between the two towers, which is a parabola. And also, calculus allowed us to find the length of the two cables by the use of the arc length formula. With this information, the cost of the two cables from tower to tower could be found, which is $24 million. Calculus is cool. Yeah, go calculus. And that's it.